another story. We were in the mushroom. I wasn't there. <clears throat> Lee was, I don't know. I can't remember the age he was really young, about 18 or something. And uh, he used to go in the CBs. He's looking up there saying, you better not tell them this. <laughs> and he was talking, <laughs> he's talking to his lass on the, on the CB. And then she's talking back to me, talking back to me, and she's talking back to the women, they've got two ten four good buddy and all that. So he said, the bus driver have to take me up to see this lass. She sounds lovely and all that. And it was Nottingham, I think it was. So I went all the way to Nottingham and he got there and she was absolutely huge. Big, massive girl. <clears throat> no disrespect to me, but where, but he went, <clears throat> get me on, get me on, Buster. Oh, no, you can't go, Buster. Says, I need a cup of coffee. Buster was riding him up. Buster's taxi driver loved him a bit. He lived in Queen Street, um, South Bank. <clears throat> And he's going, you can't have that girl, she's been talking to you for two weeks on this walkie-talkie thing. And all that. <laughs> the least, least talking to her. And he's just trying to get me out of here. He's saying, get me away from there. Anyway, this lad comes in, he's talking to him. He starts talking to the lad. He said, oh, he said, oh, blah, 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 blah. I do a bit of work, fighting for money and all that. He starts talking to the lad about this fighting for money and stuff. So he said, oh, I'll, I'll, he said, I know a little we'll fight you for money and that. So the lads arranged anyway. They got numbers, phone numbers off each other. And that was the only good thing happened. He couldn't wait again. He said, yo, you bastard buster. I went to told you not the fucking thing. He said, buster was just crease laughing on the motorway. He pulled over, couldn't stop laughing. But she was huge, this girl. She was like ugly as sin. Uh, God bless her. And uh, Lee, Lee was devastated. He, he knew what was going on. And anyway, he comes back. Anyway, he gets hold of this number and phones this lad. Phones so off, they arrange the fight. So they, they arrange the fight. He says, come to Middlesbrough, because where, where the mashroom is, Lee used to work on there. And he said, come there, and Sean was my and John, two brother-in-laws, friends of mine, they were there. And a few other handwriting right lads, he was there, David. There was about six or seven lads in the pub anyway. This lad's come down with a traveller in a, in, a, in a vehicle, 400 pounds each for the fight. I think it was 400 pounds roughly, but I think that's probably... So I said to Sean, you mind the money, my 400 pounds. And then the lad said, you'll give it to your man. So the gyp gypsy lad, the traveling lad, <clears throat> nice kids, no trouble at all. That's what they did for, for money, for fighting. So he gets, he, that, his man's holding his 400 pounds and Sean's holding Lee's 400 pounds. So they go up through the back and you go on the top of it. There's car parks there. But like roofs, if you know what I mean, you go up the stairs and you back your car and you go in the pubs and stuff in Middlesbrough. <coughs> so they've gone up there. <coughs> I've gone up there. I've gone up there to have a fight. And the lads were running at Lee and went, bam, bam. Lee just went, boof, one left oak. Sparked him unconscious on the on the top on the floor. He's laid out. He says, Give the money, Sean. Takes the four hundred pound off Sean. He says, Give that money here, Mucka. Took the four hundred pound off him, puts it together, gets eight hundred pound. The lad wakes up and he shakes Lee's hand and everything. Do you want a drink now? No, I'm just going to get back. He said, and He took my head off there. He said, Lee, look, fucking hell. He said, Power in there was unbelievable. I've never been hit like that in my life. He said, uh, Thanks for the fight and everything. He said, Everything okay? Have you got the money now? He said, Yeah, we're all right. We're friends. Keeping the light. Still were friends later, he met him in jail again. He, um, so Lee was telling me, he said, later on when I got to jail, when he went to another jail, he said he was in there and he was like best of friends with him. But the kid went back down there, but the kid didn't know this. When he gave Sean the 400 pound, it was just paper. He didn't have any money, he didn't have a light. He didn't have a rap light. <laughs> he said, what would have happened if you lost? He said, I knew I wasn't going to lose. So that's Lee Duffy, that, that story is 100% true. Um, his partner Carol was still, still, still alive, she'll tell you that, it's 100% fact. He never had a penny for the fact. He went into the fight and knocked the traveller out, he made 400 quid, he went to the pub, bought all the lads a drink over there. Yeah, Lee Duffy, typical Lee Duffy. God bless, God bless his soul. <laughs>